It's an oral tablet, so the the loading dose is is is, is 180 milligrams, and then twice 90 milligrams per day. At this point in time, it's for 12 months. That's within our label. And now we conducted the additional uh, um, um, study that's called Pegasus, mm -hmm. in which we looked into the efficacy and safety of ticagrelor. After, um, more than one year after the index event mm -hmm. and with that that study that we actually um, presented at ACC we saw that in, in, in as a confirmation for, for, for Plato that you still derive benefit for those patients even after you start therapy one year out from, from their index event um, and that is quite intriguing because there was a lot of discussion about the duration of dual antiplatelet therapy there was a lot of debate to shorten it but what this clearly shows is actually that there's a substantial unmet medical need, a substantial risk for, the, for, for those patients for future cardiovascular events, and that with ticaglor you can actually reduce that quite significantly. As I mentioned, you need to, to have an appropriate qualified medic or appropriate, appropriate qualified nurses uh, available to make a, uh, the appropriate diagnosis in order to initiate this therapy. Mm -hmm. Now, the good thing what we also saw within, with, within this specific assessment and sub-analysis is that with regards to risk, there was no increase in major bleeding for the pretreatment group versus the patients that were initiated in hospital. So that really precludes the, 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 the specific um, of, 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 of initiating the therapy. There are known tolerability aspects with, 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 uh, associated with dicaglor. For instance, there's a certain number of patients that experience dyspnea. Um, and uh, that is, in most cases, the most prominent side effect, as you, as you, as you can say, said, uh, for patients what they, what they, what they experience. The good thing is that this, this dyspnea is, is usually very transient. So if they're willing to tolerate that for the first two weeks, usually it weans off after, after continuation of therapy. Limited known, known drug drug interactions. Um, in contrast to clopidogrel, there's no metabolic conversion necessary within the liver. So it's a direct acting antiplatelet drug. Um, so that is very, very modest. Um, obviously, you need to un un understand what kind of other potential um, antithrombotic or antiplatelet drug these patients have on board because that could have a consequence with regards to bleeding risk. And also with regards to comorbidities, you need to understand what type of patient you're dealing with. If a patient, for instance, had a hemorrhagic stroke in the past, you need to be very careful with regards to applying this type of therapy. The interesting results that we showed this to date here with uh, the presented by Mark Bonacca was a sub-analysis of, of, of that total data set of Pegasus. And here we looked at, as I said, you got a variety of patients coming into the trial. They had to have at least a, a, a period of one year from their index event. Now, up to three years after their index event, some patients were still on dual antiplatelet therapy or on P2Y12 inhibitor just prior of randomization, and some were already off for more than a year. So we looked into the effect of ticaglor in those patients with stratified uh, along the line of the, initiate, the, the discontinuation of P2Y12 therapy. Some, so we looked at the patients that discontinued uh, within 30 days before randomization in Pegasus, between 30 days and a year, and after one year. And what this showed and revealed is that not only that the patients in whom, you, you, whom were discontinued P2Y12 therapy 30 days prior of randomization in Pegasus have a much higher future cardiovascular risk of 9%, but also the, the, the efficacy of TIGER is much higher in this subgroup. So it actually suggests that those patients um, could be better off by continuation of, of, of TIGER after their It's a very exciting times for us because uh, within the next three, four years, we've got a continuous readout of, of some major outcome studies coming forward. Mm -hmm. The next outcome study is Socrates, and Socrates is actually a uh, study in which we looked into patients with an acute stroke or an acute t transient ischemic attack. And it's a 90-day uh, study treatment in which we compare ticaglor versus aspirin um, and look at the efficacy and safety within this, pa in, within this setting. Um, after that, we're going to have a uh, readout of the Euclid trial, and the Euclid trial included patients with peripheral artery disease. Um, and 
um, in some cases patients with both peripheral artery disease and, and coronary artery disease uh, present. And those patients are subject to quite substantial cardiovascular risk in the future. Um, and here we compare ticagrelor versus clopidogrel in, uh, in the entirety of that patient population. And that's going to read out at the end of next year. And then finally, we've also got the Thema study ongoing, which is more or less a primary prevention study with 17,000 patients in which we compare ticagrelor versus aspirin mm -hmm. as a uh, standard therapy. So it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a wealth of data that will come forward within the next couple of years. The thing is that, and that's the nice thing, we also have besides our life cycle management program and indication seeking trials, we have a very nice platform of external sponsored research and I think that's really intriguing because within that platform physicians can actually bring proposals to us as a company um, to, to, to unravel other relevant questions that are still in, in need of answering. Um, and and these, these trials are ongoing, which are a substantial amount of trials ongoing. Um, one of them is, for instance, Global Leaders, where we look at um, ticagrelor monotherapy instead of dual antiplatelet therapy with ticagrelor. That is a very intriguing concept, because what would be the effect of, from an efficacy or a safety perspective, by just looking at monotherapy with ticagrelor versus dual antiplatelet therapy of ticagrelor and aspirin. And there's numerous other trials that will read out in the subsequent years.